Hello and welcome back to my channel. On this video, I'm going to be talking about the books that I'm planning to read in April. And typically what I do is pick out 18 books that I want to read uh, that are on my to be read pile ahead of time. And then at the end of the video, I also draw a random alphabet letter and then choose five books from my Kindle that start with that letter. And that adds up to 23 books that I'm trying to read each month in the year of 2023. Now, this month is slightly different. I'm actually going to do a bunch of books uh, above 18 because what I decided to do was actually pull books from Kindle Unlimited that I want to read. And I really want to try to get through a bunch that I have just not been getting to. And I do have a Kindle Unlimited subscription. It is not a sponsor for this video, but I thought it might be fun to show you some of the kinds of things that are on Kindle Unlimited and also get through my pile of Kindle Unlimited things that I've been wanting to read. So a couple of these are series that I'm trying to get through, and then there's a bunch of standalones that I'm kind of interested in dipping into as well. So uh, first on my list is a book called Things We Never Got Over, and this is a book by uh, Lucy Score, and I'm going to be kind of pulling these up as I'm going through here just to tell you a little bit about them. Um, this is a romance novel that is basically about a woman who um, her sister leaves um, her with her niece kind of unexpectedly and it's an 11 year old and uh, there's a man who is basically supporting her with um, being kind of left with this 11 year old. Um, so I think this is kind of a small town romance. Um, it takes place in Knockmount, Virginia. And I know there's a second book in this series. A lot of people have been talking about it recently, but I never read the first book. So I decided I wanted to pick up that one. I also decided to uh, try to get to Baggage Claim, which is by Juliana Smith. And this is about a woman who's been avoiding her hometown, but a phone call from her mom has her agreeing to spend the holidays back home with her family. So this is a holiday book. Um, also think this is a, a romance as well. Um, the male character, let's see, I think they meet on the plane back to her hometown and uh, then they spend the next two weeks going on spirit-filled Christmas dates with uh, her family. So I did not know this was a Christmas book, but hey, why not read a Christmas book in April? Okay, the next couple of books are in a series. The first one is called A Next of Kin, and it's in the next series book. Um, it is a, called A Foster Guardian's Romance, and what I kind of drew me into this book is it's basically about um, two people who are trying to foster, I think, children that are their relatives, but they're denied being able to foster them. And so they move in together to try to um, kind of get approval that they can foster these kids. Uh, the second one I also have on Kindle Unlimited, it's called Next to You. And I think it kind of continues the same kind of theme um, around fostering children, which I thought was kind of an interesting twist. So Next to You and then Next of, or sorry, Next of Kin and then Next to You. I also decided to pick up uh, All Systems Red by Martha Wells. This is kind of a novella in a series called The Murderbot Diaries. Um, it's not that long. I think it's like 150 pages, but I've heard really good things about it. And a lot of people have been talking about it. Um, so quick synopsis is, uh, let's see, a murderous android discovers itself in All Systems Red, a tense science fiction adventure by Martha Wells that interrogates the roots of consciousness through artificial intelligence. Um, so thought I would pick that up. Hopefully that's a quick read. Uh, let's see, then I have a bunch of books in a series where I've read the first couple of them. Let me pull up the next one that I'm gonna be reading here. So um, Wolf Hunter River by Rachel Kane is the third in a series called Still House Lake. And I have uh, the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth on Kindle Unlimited that I'm planning to read this month. Um, What's interesting about this series is the first book starts out with a woman named Gwen who basically finds out in book one that her husband is a serial killer. And if I'm remembering right, this I read this a while ago, basically someone like crashes into their house with their car, like there's like a car accident. And when they crash into their house, they crash into the garage and her husband had been like keeping a woman in the garage um, and he was like torturing her in their garage. And Gwen did not know this. Of course, there's all the suspicion about what did she know? What did she not know? But we find out that she did not know that he was a serial killer. And then the this next couple of books, um, he basically goes to prison. I think in book two, he gets out of prison and he's like trying to find her. 
Um, and then, uh, so what, what we see in book three is Gwen escaped her serial killer husband and saved her family. What she can't seem to outrun is his, is his notoriety. Or the sick internet vigilante is still seeking to avenge his crimes. She cannot hide, um, but she's trying to create a normal life for her kids. But now a threatened woman has reached out. Um, she's uh, panicked for herself and her daughter. And uh, Gwen goes to kind of help this woman. And when she arrives to help her, this woman is already dead. And the daughter is blamed for the murder. And then Gwen is kind of trying to solve the crime. So it's basically gone from like a woman who was kind of a victim of circumstance with her husband's crimes to now I think she's solving crimes in this series. So uh, the, the order of these books, just you have all the titles is um, first is this Wolf Hunter River. Um, the fourth book in the series is called Bitter Falls. The fifth book is called Heartbreak Bay. And then the sixth book, which I, I'm not sure that this is the final book in the series. Right now there's just six books. Um, it's called Trapper Road. So if you're interested in where to start, the first book is called Stillhouse Lake and then Kilman Creek. So um, these are ones that I haven't gotten to in quite a while. Um, it's been years, I think, since I read the first couple. So interested in getting back to those. So those are four from Rachel Kane that I'm hoping to pick up this month. Okay, next book on my list is a book called Funny Feelings by Tara DeWitt. This is another romance, and I think it's like a, let's see here. I, it's meant to be kind of definitely a romantic comedy. It says, uh, Funny Feelings is a swoony story about friendship, love, and looking for the laugh in life. It touches on the creative spirit and all that comes with sharing that gift, and how oftentimes the comedians in our lives are the most sensitive or struggling. It features two friends, one incredible little girl, and a kaleidoscope of feelings along the way. This is one I've also just heard really good things about, so decided to pick that up as well. One book that I've been meaning to read for a long time, in part because of its gorgeous cover, is Fable by Adrienne Young. Um, this is a book that is a, a two-parter. It's a duology. The second book in the series uh, is called Namesake, and they both have like half a woman's face on the cover, so when you put the books together, you see the whole face, which I think is kind of a cool thing that they're doing in terms of the cover design. And um, this is a book that, let's see, let me find the description here. It says, welcome to a world made dangerous by the sea and by those who wish to profit from it, where a young girl must find her place and her family while trying to survive in a world built for men. As the daughter of the most powerful trader in the Narrows, the sea is the only home 17-year-old Fable has ever known. It's been four years since the night she watched her mother drown during an unforgiving storm. The next day, her father abandoned her on a legendary island filled with thieves and little food. To survive, she must keep to herself, learn to trust no one, and rely on the unique, the unique skills her mother taught her. Uh, and it goes on from there. So this is a book that I've seen a ton of people talking about. It looks really fun. Excited to dive into that one. I also uh, put on my list a book called Float Plan by Trish Dollar. And this is a woman who has, um, or her fiance has died and she decides to go on this Caribbean sailing trip that she was supposed to take with her fiance. And well, I should say it says heartbroken by the loss of her fiance. I'm assuming that means her fiance has died. Maybe her fiance has not died. I will find out when I read this book. Um, but she goes to sea on this sailboat and then realizes she can't do it alone. And so she hires this professional sailor to help her. And of course they have a romance as they're sailing together. So float plan is also on my list. I also decided to pick up another Kate Claiborne. Um, this is a book uh, called Love at First. And I had read her other book, Love Lettering, and really, really enjoyed it. And so um, I was excited to dive into this one. This is about a teenage boy who heard the girl of his dream standing beneath an apartment building balcony. He shared a perfect moment with a lovely, warm voiced stranger. It's a memory that has never faded. Um, and then he encounters this woman again, um, who's like living above him, I guess, at this point, And he remembers her, her voice um, and they have a romance. So it's called An Uplifting and Unforgettable Story of Love and Second Chances. Okay, so the next one I chose to add to my list, I'm honestly not sure if I'm gonna like it. I'm just gonna be honest about that. Um, it's called Magnolia Parks by Jessa Hastings. This is a book that 
a lot of people have been talking about and they've been comparing it to Gossip Girl, which I've never watched, but it's basically kind of like elite um, London socialites that are in kind of these very dysfunctional relationships with each other. I'm willing to give it a spin. I'm willing to give it a try just because so many people seem to find it kind of fun. Um, but I'm honestly not sure what I'm going to think about it. So basically you have um, a woman named Magnolia and a man named BJ that are supposedly like meant to be, but they're just highly dysfunctional in their romance and they kind of cheat on each other and are just not, you know, being very caring towards each other. And, um, but they're trying to figure out like, are they meant to be together, I guess. Um, so it sounds like a lot of drama and I'm curious, you know, what I, what I will think of that one. I also added a couple of nonfiction books to my list here. The first one is called Commencement, The Beginning of a New Era in Higher Education. This is by Kate Colbert and Joe Sosolustio. Um, and I thought this one looked interesting because it's basically, I think, a bunch of interviews with presidents of higher ed um, universities and colleges. And um, they're thinking about like new leadership structures, um, how you need to kind of survive in institutions of higher education um, as we come into this kind of new era. And as somebody who works in, in higher education, I thought this one looked interesting. So I put that on my list. And then the other nonfiction books, I went ahead and grabbed The Rise and Fall of the Dinosaurs, A New History of a Lost World by Steve Brusate. This is a book that I have been like intrigued by since I saw somebody get it over the holidays on social media. Somebody was talking about this book. And this is basically um, the true story of the dinosaurs, as much as we know. Um, and it's written by someone who is a scientist and this is kind of their, their work. And um, it's a young American paleontologist who has emerged as one of the foremost stars of the field. Uh, he's discovered 10 new species and groundbreaking scientific studies. He tells the complete surprising and new history of the dinosaurs. So fascinating, looking forward to diving into that. And then uh, the last nonfiction book I added to my list is a book called Emergent Strategy by Adrian Marie Brown. And this one I thought was really fascinating. It's described as a resolutely materialist spirituality based equally on science and science fiction, a wild feminist and Afrofuturist ride. Uh, sign me up. That sounds amazing. Uh, so I'm interested in, in figuring out more about that book. And then, okay, back to fiction. I had encountered recently, and I still haven't read her yet as of recording this video, um, an author named um, Caro Ramsey. And Kindle Unlimited had the first three books in one of her detective series called Anderson and Costello. And they are Scottish crime mystery and thrillers. And because I had not read anything by this author, I picked up the trilogy basically of the first three books. And I'm interested to kind of dive into these and see what I think. So this is actually kind of like a three for one. Book one of the series is called Absolution. Book two is called Singing to the Dead and book three is called Dark Water. So in the first book, um, there's about, it's about a serial killer and the detectives are trying to solve uh, this case of a serial killer. In the second book, it is about kidnappings of young boys. And then in the third book, it looks like a body is found and uh, his face is disfigured and they're trying to figure out who killed him and, and who this person is. So. I thought I would just dive in and kind of see what I think of this author. So I have this this uh, three book set that hopefully I'll get to this month. Okay, I know there's a bunch, a uh, few more here on the list. I added a couple of books by John Mars because I just can't get enough of John Mars. And on Kindle Unlimited, sometimes you have the option of getting the audio with the Kindle Unlimited book uh, on Kindle as well. And he had a couple of books that had the audio available. So one of them is called Keep It in the Family. And this is basically about a man and a woman who move into a house and the woman becomes pregnant. And they're trying to kind of get this house ready for the new baby that's coming. And they're in the middle of these renovations and the woman finds a message on a skirting board that says, I will save them from the attic. And when they go and look into the attic, they find out that their house was like part of, something was kind of horrifying about what was happening in the attic. Now, I don't know exactly what was happening in the attic. That's not clear from the description, um, but basically it's a traumatic discovery. And um, this woman like can't shake her fixation with what had happened previously in their house. 
John Mars can write some really um, disturbing kind of horror books and horror is not usually my genre, but I tend to really like John Mars. So that's the first one. And then the second one is called Her Last Move um, by the same author. And basically this is about a detective that is trying to solve a case. And I believe it's a serial killer case. Um, and let's see. They're trying to basically this woman and it's called police super recognizer, John Ru Joe Russell. I don't know what a police super recognizer is. Um, I'm sure it's part of John Mars universe that he kind of creates these things that don't necessarily exist. Um, but basically they're working together to uncover the connection between a series of murders. And I'm willing to read it just based on that because I've liked previous John Mars and, and we'll see what I think of that one. Okay, I also have on my list a book called Into a Cornish Wind, which is a romance set on the Cornish coast. And uh, let's see, it looks like there's a woman who's kind of beginning a new chapter. Um, she has a new job and let's see, she has also a gift that when she paints, she's able to see the history of her subject kind of by magic. So there's kind of like a paranormal aspect here and um, she ends up crossing paths with a local sailor and uh, she begins to wonder whether she can open her heart to love one more time. So romance set on the Cornish coast. Uh, next up, I have a book called The Perfect Marriage by Adam Mitzner. Now this should not be um, kind of mixed up with another book called The Perfect Marriage, which has been popular. This one um, was actually on my list first and thought I would kind of pick it up. There's another book, I'm not sure who the author is, but when I was searching for this one, the other one kept coming up. So just know that this is by Mitzner. And this is about a couple who are celebrating their first year together. They had a second chance at true love. And basically they have, the woman has an ex-husband um, and the man has an ex-wife who's been very like vengeful and threatening of them. And basically uh, the man enters into kind of this like shady business deal and their marriage starts to kind of take a dark turn. So definitely kind of like a, a thriller and perhaps a mystery um, with kind of, it sounds like a love triangle maybe going on in this book. So we'll see what, what happens there. And just a couple more, one more is a, I think this is also a novella called The Sweet Spot by Anne Kemp. Yeah, it's just 136 pages. And basically um, there's a woman who uh, has a food truck, I believe, um, or her brother has a food truck and his best friend becomes an ambassador for the food truck. And uh, so this is like uh, a guy who's falling for his best friend's sister and it just looked kind of cute. It looks like it involves donuts from the cover. So I'll try it out and see what I think. All right, the last one that I have on my pre-selected list here, and I think altogether this is like 24, 26 books maybe, um, is Jasper Vale, which is the, let's see, fifth book in the, or sorry, the fourth book in the Eden series by Devney Perry. This is a book where I read several of the earlier books um, in the series and really enjoyed them. This is a great world. It's basically a bunch of siblings that have interconnected romances. And in this particular one, um, one of the sisters in the sibling group goes to Vegas and get the, like, you know, accidentally getting married as one does when, when you go to Vegas. And this, um, the guy that she marries, I think is a good friend of one of her siblings partners if i remember correctly and he comes back uh, with her to this small town in montana and and wants to basically stay married with her for a short time um so he can kind of like trick his family i think because he has to go to a wedding all of the kinds of things that you see in these kinds of romances where people are just trying to kind of like uh create these plots that feel a little bit unreasonable or unrealistic but you follow along Anyway, okay, so those are all the books that I have on my list. Kind of a mix, a lot of romance in here, but definitely some sci-fi fantasy, um, some thriller, some detective, some nonfiction uh, in there as well. And I'm looking forward to seeing what I'll be able to get through uh, over the next 
month or so. All right, so now let me go ahead and pick a letter out of my random container here and see if I can find some books to add to my list for April. All right, the letter I have chosen is A, which is perfect for the month of April. And let me now go through my list here and see what I can find. And what might look interesting. Tons of A books to read here and to choose from. Okay, so the first book I'm gonna pick is a book called Amari and the Knight Brothers, um, which is part of a series called Supernatural Investigations. And this is by B.B. Alston. Uh, this is a middle grade fantasy book. And just looking through here, looks like she's, she's been nominated for a summer tryout at the Bureau of Supernatural Affairs which is a secret organization that um, Amari is trying to use to find her missing brother. So um, middle grade book, Supernatural Elements, sign me up for that. All right, let's see. I wanna look through and see what kinds of options I have here because there's actually quite a few. I also need to check and see which ones are um, series books, okay. Definitely one I'm going to pick is called The Atlas Six, and this is by Olive Blake. And let's see here. I think there's a couple of books in this series because I've seen the second one. It recently came out. It's a dark academic debut fantasy with an established cult following. Um, each decade, only the six most uniquely talented magicians are selected to earn a place in the Alexandrian society, the foremost secret society in the world. The chosen will secure a life of power and prestige beyond their wildest dreams, but at what cost? Each of the six newest recruits has their reasons for accepting the society's elusive invitation, even if it means growing closer than they could have imagined to their most dangerous enemies. Um, so sounds interesting. Okay. Atlas Six by Olivia Blake. So that's two. And I am also going to pick up uh, the first book in the Aurora cycle, and it's called Aurora Rising. And this says the year is 2380 and the graduating cadets of Aurora Academy are being assigned their first missions. Star pupil Tyler Jones is ready to recruit the squad of his dreams, but his own boneheaded heroism sees him stuck with the dregs nobody else in the academy would touch. A cocky diplomat, a sociopath scientist, a smart ass tech whiz, an alien warrior, and a tomboy pilot. Um, and that's not even his biggest problem. That'd be Aurora Jylin O'Malley, the girl he's just rescued from interdimensional space. Um, so sounds like a space adventure. All right, I'll pick that up. Uh, let's see. I am also going to choose, I'm doing definitely like a sci-fi fantasy theme this month. I'm going to choose The Awakening, the Dragonheart Legacy book one by Nora Roberts. And it says, in the realm of Talam, a teenage warrior named Keegan emerges from a lake holding a sword, representing both power and the terrifying responsibility to protect the Fae. In another realm known as Philadelphia, a young woman has just discovered she possesses a treasure of her own. When Breen Kelly was a girl, her father would tell her stories of magical places. Now she's an anxious 20-something mired in student debt and working a job she hates. But one day she stumbles upon a shocking discovery. Her mother has been hiding an investment account in her name. It has been funded by her long-lost father and is worth nearly $4 million. Newfound fortune would be life-changing, but little does she know when she uses some of the money to journey to Ireland, it will unlock mysteries she couldn't have imagined. So, okay. Awesome. And let's see, I need one more here. And let's see. There are quite a few that look interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm also gonna pick up a book I've been wanting to read for a while. Um, it is called And Then There Were Nuns, um, Adventures in a Cloistered Life by Jane Christmas. I think I actually had this on my list 
maybe last year or earlier this year, and I just haven't gotten to it yet. Basically, it's a woman who embarks on an unconventional quest to see if she's meant to be a nun. And it just looks interesting. I love memoirs, so I'm gonna add that to my list as well. So I think that is my five of what I'm planning to read. All right, so looking forward to all of these books that I'm planning to read in the month of April. And if you wanna stick around to the end of the month, you'll see what I was able to get through. And until then, happy reading.